the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. First things first, I want to say sorry for missing an upload on Monday, but Mother Nature sent a tornado to my neighborhood and I spent like almost five days without power. I couldn't even use any of my equipment, but I'm back now. And if you are watching this in the future, just ignore what I just said. So today, we're watching Hard Candy. Uh, guys, I love this movie a lot, and I don't want to say clearly what it's about yet because it will literally just explain the whole movie alone. But I will say it's an adolescent versus pedophile, starring my old crush, Ellen Page. If you want to find out what happens and see the most messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. The movie starts out with Lensman319 talking with Thong Girl 14 about arranging a meetup. And then we cut away from this weird chat site to our girl Thong Girl 14, real name Haley, tearing up this chocolate cake at a coffee house. Well, this is where she meets Jeff, who happens to be clearly older and a photographer and know it all. Just by hearing Haley's voice, we can tell she's obviously very young. I would've kind of figured if I was working there, I'd pay attention to how a grown man meets with this young child, but maybe the barista just wasn't paying attention. Back with Jeff, he is very smitten with Haley, trying to win her over with his little old manly smooth talk. Then while conversing, we learned that Haley isn't even in high school yet, meaning she's at most 15 years old, talking to Mark Jefferson over here. We also see a missing persons poster for a girl named Donna, obviously young as well. What are you getting yourself into, Haley? Then Jeff says that she looks and acts older than she is. Like that makes it cool to be talking to a young girl. Maybe if you don't get your ass someone older because that's what you like, right? Then why not just get an older girl? Haley seems to be smitten with him as well, doing what she can to tease him and also ask to go back to his home, which probably gets him excited as all hell. It's a long slow motion like drive to Jeff's house. It sort of feels like it's telling me it's gonna be Haley's last drive. Well, rather not Haley herself, but rather what Haley represents, a young girl in the clutches of a pedophile. They make it to Mark Jeff Person's house. Comment below if you get that reference. Jeff brings some drinks out, but Haley uses her wits to point out the possibility of drug beverages and tells him she'll fix the drinks. He shows her his photography room, which kind of looks like the recording spot I'm recording in right now. This man is too well financed to be inviting 14 year old girls in his home. She's not even physically mature yet, man. This dude is getting on my fucking nerves. Haley makes another drink off screen and Jeff drinks it all in the midst of sleeping with a child before. Haley gives him a little anxiety when she snoops around, but then she offers to be a model for him. She puts on some little pump and gets turned. She starts tripping as Jeff starts getting woozy. He tells Haley to sit down before falling down unconscious. Well, I wonder what made him pass out. We see him tied up in a chair, which is all Haley's doing, including drugging his nasty pedo ass. Shout out to my homegirl Haley. She has clearly took advantage of this stupid head smelly butt. All right, next cut his balls off. Homie still thinks it's a game though, but Haley says playtime is over. I gotta applaud Haley. She was quick and witty and intelligent to be able to pull this off. Haley is serious though, and she checks around his house asking why he is such a pedo. Pedo? Pedo? Okay, I think pedo. He screams for help, causing Haley to subdue him. It turns out that Haley literally strategically planned what has happened, such as making several accounts to learn about Jeff, and even making sure it was today because she knew both his neighbors would be gone, including where exactly they would be. She completely grills him, saying a great quote that everybody pedophilic should know. Just because a girl can imitate a woman does not mean she is ready to do what a woman does. Later, she checks his emails and then finds out he must be hiding some adolescent masturbation feel as he looks anxious. Then after looking over his house for his child porn, she finds a chest in a bed of rocks that needs a combination. Jeff is also trying to debunk her and shit, talking all about her family and her teenage vulnerabilities, which seems to get at her, but she fakes any sadness from his attempts to smooth talk her. She practices many combinations involving a girl that Jeff dated named Janelle, but Haley is a genius, easily figuring out the combination through her understanding of Jeff. She opens it, finding a CD and possibly photos that depict nude adolescent girls, causing Jeff to cry like the bitch he is. 
but then he kicks Haley and escapes to the house to get his gun that Haley found earlier. When he comes back out, Haley is gone, and then Haley suffocates him with plastic wraps, which probably took a lot of strength for Haley. Then we see she is very frustrated, possibly because this wasn't a part of the plan. Then we see Haley has tied up a new Jeff, placing a bag of ice on his male organs that he should have had cut off. While he was out, Haley even found a pic of Donna Maurer, the girl we saw on the missing persons poster in the beginning. But he keeps saying he didn't even take her home. But if that was true, why keep a picture as a memento? Or why didn't you just go to the police to share what you know? Then we see Haley brings out some tools, apparently with a plan to cut off Jeff's balls. But lucky for him, the ice numbs his genitals. While she's waiting for his balls to numb, she also gets an email ready to send to Janelle about her relationship with Jeff. Once he is numb, Haley is about to begin operation, but he starts screaming, causing her to give him a mouth load of chemicals. He starts panicking, and after some sterilization, she leaves him to numb more. Although for some reason, Haley gets spotted on the roof by another neighbor. What was she doing on the roof anyway? Later, Jeff starts blabbering, telling a story of when he was nine years old with his four and five year old cousins. The youngest one, a four year old girl, would often jump on the young Jeff naked and all he did was let her play with him. Once he got caught by his aunt and was punished by getting his ass burned on the stove and is banned from ever seeing his aunt again. Haley listens to his story. All the more reason to cut off his pedal wee wee off. Then, listen to this, y'all. Listen to this. Are y'all listening? <laughs> Jeff wants to say this to Haley. He says, You need help. Bitch, what the fuck? Haley believes he killed Donna, which he keeps saying he didn't. Haley then begins surgery and castrates him at a long ordeal, but completely off screen. Thankfully, she starts cutting off one testicle at a time. She then holds his parts jokefully saying what she should do to them and then throws them in the sink satisfied with the surgery but drenched in sweat like i am because this building's hot as hell she goes to take a shower leaving him tied up he successfully gets loose and looks down to see he is actually unharmed he grabs a scalpel going to the shower but gets attacked from behind by Haley. She stun guns him, making him eventually pass out. She then intelligently wipes her prints from everything, stunning him when he gets annoying. We can tell this isn't her first time doing something like this. She starts to finish up her punishment of Jeff, even forging a confession note to his pedophilic crimes. Then she hangs him, but has him sitting on a chair. But then the doorbell rings, which happens to be a neighbor selling Girl Scout cookies. She was the woman who saw Haley on the roof. Even mentioning, even mentioning, even mentioning it, even mentioning it as Haley struggles to talk her way out of this encounter. She leaves awkwardly, but then tells Jeff that he has an ultimatum either stay alive with the guilt and consequences, or die with his legacy intact and pedophile free. Well, he then grabs her with his legs, causing her to panic as he gets free. She runs away, hiding like Ellie as he taunts her. She grabs the rope and then Jeff stabs a picture of a girl in anger before thanking Haley for bringing out his true self. We then see she is on the roof. She points a gun at him, telling him she called Janelle and she is on the way. And also that the ultimatum is still open, which is kill himself and the evidence will be destroyed or Haley will pretend to be violated, which will put him away. It turns out Haley has hidden even her name. So if she was pointed out anyway, it's possible she is not even from this state. Haley represents all the abused girls he has taken advantage of. Janelle makes it to the home and Jeff tells Haley he didn't kill Donna, but he just wanted to watch to take pictures. Then he says it was him and another guy named Aaron, although Haley already knew Aaron before he even revealed his name, saying that Aaron told her that Jeff actually did kill Donna before killing himself. This showed that Haley hasn't just went after Jeff. Jeff, now out of options, grabs a noose which Haley helps him with, telling him don't worry, he'll be okay, and no one will know of his crimes. In a gripping slow motion shot, Jeff jumps off the roof. Then suddenly, Haley runs towards the edge, eventually saying the most savage set of words to a still conscious Jeff. She tells him, or not. 
showing that she lied about destroying the evidence of him being a pedophile, which means he is gonna die being remembered as a terrible person. The movie ends with Haley walking away from the scene in a red hoodie, resembling Little Red Riding Hood who just beat the wolf in his own game. Well, I think this movie deserves a round of applause, showing a vigilante 14 year old girl who stops pedophiles. I don't know if I would have killed him, but it was pretty cool seeing this Punisher type punishment from a 14 year old girl. Well, we're not done yet. It's time to see the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moment in that spooky stuff. Okay, let's get right into it. The most disturbed moment is hard to pick, but just to pick, I'd say probably the reveal of what is in Jeff's memento box. We didn't see what was in it, but we can assume from the dialogue it was nude girls. Girls shouldn't be taken advantage of like that. The most enjoyed moment was when Haley said, or not, as he killed himself. I mean, at the end of the day, a murderer and a pedophile shouldn't die with a good legacy behind them. And that's it. This movie made me point out why I also like doing these videos, because they can be treated as cautionary tales. Any viewers of this channel, make sure you be careful on who you talk to on the internet, even if you're grown, because a lot of perverts and pedophiles out there will do whatever their disturbed hearts desire. Crimes against children are always the crimes that hurt me the most. And it was very good to see Ellen Page play a girl that represents those children and was willing to punish the dangerous people that take advantage of children. So, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Spooky out.